Good morning, family of fast. Matt Mossman, the Chief Endurance Officer over at Endure Elite. Today, we're going to cover kind of a hot, debatable topic, and this is if minimalist slash barefoot running is better than traditional running shoes when it comes to things like improving running economy, preventing injuries, and increasing running performance. Now, this whole minimalist barefoot running boom started probably about 10 to 15 years ago and really got started up with the uh, Born to Run book uh, by Chris McDougall, I believe, who went down and ran with the Terra Humara Indians and saw how awesome they ran. And it spurred this whole minimalist barefoot movement. And then you saw shoe companies kind of hopping on board with this, uh, like with first the Nike Free, and then you had those freaky little Vibram five finger toe shoes and you've just seen other companies over the years adopt more of a minimalist type slash mimic barefoot running shoe. Now, traditional running shoes, something like here, like this Brooks Glycerin, is very, very built up. It's very cushioned. It has a pretty large heel to toe drop. So this is what you think of when you think of more of a traditional shoe. Now, a minimalist running shoe, and this is, this is probably a pretty poor example, but you kind of get the point. It's a lot less cushioned, and then the drop from heel to toe is uh, slightly less, or it's more even across the bottom from heel to toe. And this kind of puts you in a similar, but not exactly positioned to if you were running barefoot. Now, full disclaimer, I've ran in the Nike Freeze when they first came out. Um, you know, I ended up getting hurt in them, but that's besides the point. I probably went a little too fast uh, to join the uh, minimalist movement. And since then, I really haven't run in a minimalist shoe. You know, I found something that really works for me and I stick with that. But with that being said, you know, I really don't have a strong stance on if minimalist shoes are the way to go compared to a traditional running shoe. And this is basically because of how conflicted the research is. So I'm not going to sit here and just give you my opinions on if minimalist running shoes are better than traditional running shoes. We're actually going to look into the research today and we're going to see if minimalist running shoes improve running economy and prevent injuries compared to traditional running shoes. Uh, so grab your popcorn, grab a drink, because this is going to be one of the longer videos, but I hope you'll be able to walk away with some good information after watching this video and make the decision if trying a minimalist running shoe or running barefoot is uh, right for you. Now, throughout this video, I'm gonna be throwing up some slides too so you guys can kind of see the information right in front of your face. Um, sometimes it's just kind of easier to read and digest that information as opposed to just listening to me the whole time. So, let's get started first with what people claim that are in favor of slash barefoot running and minimalist running shoes. So a lot of times you're going to hear people say that running barefoot or in a minimalist shoe, it basically causes people to run with a more plantar flexed ankle at initial contact, adopt a forefoot footfall pattern, which we know from previous information, this may help decrease rates of shin splints and other injuries. Um, it's going to increase stride rate reduce stride length, uh, increase ankle plantar flexure moments at decreased knee extensor moments, which basically that means it's going to reduce risk of injury or how long your foot is on the ground causing that high end impact. And then probably most importantly, all these people are claiming that it improves running economy. So that's kind of all the people, the claims they make who are in favor of barefoot slash minimalist running. Now let's look at the other side. Those against barefoot minimalist running say, it leads to more injuries. Uh, when you run barefoot or in minimalist shoes, your muscles fatigue quicker because the minimalist shoes aren't able to absorb the shock of your foot you know, slammed down against the cement. Um, they say it doesn't really increase your running economy compared to more of a traditional running shoe. It isn't the right shoe for everyone, uh, the minimalist ones, which 
To this point, I kind of agree with them. I don't know if minimalist shoes are the best decision for people who are a little bit overweight, but we'll get that to that later. Um, they also claim that you know doctors are seeing more and more patients show up at their doorsteps because of uh, minimalist running shoes uh, causing more injuries. And then lastly, they claim it doesn't uh, improve running the economy at all. So that's really kind of the two sides, those in favor of minimalist running shoes slash barefoot running and those again. So instead of like taking all these claims and opinions, let's actually look at the research behind uh, barefoot slash minimalist shoes compared to traditional running shoes. First, we're gonna look at if these types of shoes uh, improve running economy or running performance, and then we'll look at if they decrease rates of injury. So let's hop right to the slides here again. I feel like I'm a college professor all over again <laughs> throwing up these PowerPoint slides. So does minimalist footwear improve running performance? We're going to cite three studies here. Study number one examined if running economy differs in minimal shoes versus standard running shoes and in forefoot versus rear foot strike gates. The subjects in this study were 52 collegiate cross country runners, so lots of experience running if they're competing at that level. And what the, the researchers had the subjects do is run on the treadmill at three meters a second and to kind of get rid of some variables that could be argued, the shoe mass and stride frequency were controlled so it didn't play a factor in that. Now what was measured? The cost of O2 transport or VO2 max, how efficiently people will run it at those speeds, force and kinematic data. So important part here, what were the results? The researchers found that runners were 2.41% more economical in the minimal shoe condition when forefoot striking and 3.32% more economical in the minimal shoe condition when rear foot striking compared to the traditional running shoe group. Then they basically concluded that running in a, in a minimal running shoe was more economical than a traditional running shoe and they thought this was due to the buildup of elastic energy and then the release of it. So you may be looking at this study and saying, you know, two to three percent running economy improvements isn't really that much. But over the course of like, you know, half marathon to a marathon, that ups, adds up to a lot, a lot of distance compared to running in a traditional running shoe. So, so far so good. It looks like, you know, these, these minimalist running shoes are, are the way to go because it's improving running economy, but let's kind of go on uh, to the second study. The second study evaluated the effects of four weeks familiarization to simulated barefoot running on running economy compared to traditional running shoes. Subjects in this one were 15 trained male runners. And the, just hang tight with me here. So the researchers had these runners uh, complete two running economy tests 24 hours apart in both the barefoot condition and then in traditional running shoes at 11 kilometers an hour and 13 kilometers an hour. Subjects then completed a four week familiarization period of simulated barefoot running before repeating the two running economy tests. So the pre-test, um, they just had them do barefoot running and then uh, running in the uh, traditional running shoes. There was no like adaptation period to the minimalist shoes at all, which is important, which I'll, I'll tell you here in a second. Uh, what was measured? Oxygen uptake, heart rate, stride weight frequency, and foot strike patterns were measured in both conditions. Now, what were the results? Now, pre-test, there was no difference in running economy uh, compared to the minimalist group and the traditional running shoe group. But after the familiar, familiar of the minimalist running shoes, so training them for four weeks, uh, there was an improvement of 6.9% uh, in running economy compared to, when, uh, compared to the traditional running shoe group when post-testing was done. So conclusion here, running economy improved in the simulated barefoot running condition only after familiarization, not before when if you were to just barefoot uh, and have that tested right away and then immediately after running a traditional running shoe, you probably wouldn't see much uh, difference. But if you have a familiarization period with the minimalist slash barefoot running, you will see improvements in, in running economy as demonstrated by this study. Let's go on to study number three. And this one is kind of a big one. This was a uh, meta-analysis, which means the researchers took a look at a bunch of different research, research that uh, looked at how minimalist running shoes and traditional running shoes did in terms of uh, running economy and 
performance. So like the study said, this meta-analysis investigated the effect of footwear running performance and running economy in distance runners, uh, reviewed controlled trials that compared different footwear conditions or compared footwear with barefoot. So basically they're just looking for studies that compared minimalist shoes to traditional shoes and seeing if that made any uh, improvements in performance or running economy. Uh, we won't look at the methods right here, but yeah, like before, they were just looking for studies that compared that thing. And what they found uh, after they did the meta-analysis, I think they reviewed over a thousand different articles and they ended up with 19 studies that uh, identified the things they were looking for. And what they found is beneficial effects on running economy for comfortable and stiff-soled shoes, so not necessarily minimalist, a significant small beneficial effect on running economy for cushion shoes, so like more of a traditional running shoe, and a significant moderate beneficial effect on running economy for training in minimalist shoes. <laughs> All this means is there was benefits across the board, but maybe more so in the minimalist shoe group when it came to running economy. Um, it also found significant small beneficial effects on running economy for light shoes and barefoot compared with heavy shoes and for minimalist shoes compared with conventional shoes. So basically they're saying that lighter shoes are more economical, which makes sense because that's less weight your foot has to move. And then lastly, a significant positive association between shoe mass and metabolic cost of running was identified. So the metabolic cost of running, uh, just again, like things like oxygen transport and stride rate and efficiency and things like that was identified. Again, more than likely because the minimalist shoe was a little bit lighter. And their conclusions are very, very vague and very, very simple. They said, certain models of footwear and footwork characteristics can improve running economy. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Thanks, thanks for that information. So those are three studies right there and all of them seem you know, pretty positive as far as, you know, minimalist shoes slash barefoot running, improving running economy. So you might be saying at this point, wham, there's really no downside to going the, you know, the minimalist route, but I'm going to play devil's advocate here. And now we're going to look at, um, does minimalist footwear reduce the risk of injury? So again, we're not going to rely on bro science. We're going to go to the real science. So study number one examined the effects of progressive increases in footwear minimalism on injury incidents and pain perception in recreational runners. So when they're talking about progressive increases in footwear minimalism, they're talking about using shoes that have some like a 10 millimeter drop, a six millimeter drop, and then a zero millimeter drop. Subjects in this were 103 runners with neutral or mild overpronation, and they were assigned to receive one of three shoes, uh, the Nike Pegasus, which had the 10 millimeter heel drop, uh, the Nike Free, which had a six millimeter heel drop, and then the Vibram Five Fingers that had the zero millimeter heel drop. And all these runners uh, trained in these shoes for 12 weeks in preparation for a 10 kilometer run. And the researchers wanted to measure a few different things. The number of injuries that happened, foot and ankle disability scores, and visual analog scale pain ratings. So they would, you know, throw up a scale of 1 to 10 in front of these runners in these different shoes. They would say, hey, did running in those shoes hurt? If so, how bad? Zero being nothing, 10 being the worst. So... What were the results? Uh, in this one, neutral shoes reported the fewest injuries, which was four, and the partial minimalist shoes, so the Nike Free, reported the most of 12. R and basically, runners in the minimalist shoes reported greater shin and calf pain, too, compared to the more cushion neutral shoe, or the Nike Pegasus. So what the researchers concluded here, and this may get your blood boiling if you're on the minimalist shoe movement, is running in minimalist footwear appears to increase the likelihood of experiencing an injury and increasing pain at the shin and calf. So that's study number one. Let's go on to study number two. And this one examined whether the drop of a standard cushion running shoe influenced running injury risk. So again, we're looking at the heel to toe drop of various shoes. And this one was a pretty big study. There was 553 recreational runners that were classified as either occasional runners, meaning they've been running for six months or less, or regular runners, meaning they ran for six months or more. And they were randomly assigned to receive a shoe of a 10 millimeter drop, a six millimeter drop, or a zero millimeter drop. And they were instructed to run in these shoes for six months. And what was measured here is they just wanted to see overall injury risk. Um, so here's the results. Of the 553 runners, 136 total were injured across the board. 
The 10 millimeter droop, drop group had an injury rate of 21.6%, the six millimeter group 27.4%, and the zero millimeter group 24.6%. And when they analyzed all these statistics, they found that it wasn't statistically different, meaning injury rates weren't greater in one group over the other. And the researchers basically said it doesn't really matter what running shoe you're in, whether it's traditional or minimalist, uh, injury rates are the same. So their conclusion, statistically injury risk was not modified by the drop of the shoe. But here's the one caveat. Regular runners who ran in the minimalist shoes, so the runners that have six more, six or more months of experience running, uh, had more injuries in the minimalist shoe group compared to the group that had been running less than six months. And the researchers really didn't have a very good explanation for why this was. But uh, interesting to note. Let's go on to the last study. Study number three, um, this one examined bone marrow swelling in the foot before and after a 10 week period of transitioning from traditional to minimalist running shoes. And this, uh, this study had 36 total runners. Um, and here's what happened. Here's kind of what the methods. 17 subjects ran in traditional shoes over the 10 week period, while 19 transitioned from traditional running shoes to minimalist running shoes over the 10 week period. So essentially 17 runners stayed in their traditional running shoes for 10 weeks, while 19 started in the traditional running shoes, but kind of slowly converted to the uh, minimalist shoes over the 10 week period. And what was measured here uh, both pre and post test was bone marrow swelling in the foot measured by MRI. And here's where it gets interesting. The results showed that post training MRI scores showed more subjects in the minimalist group showed increases in bone marrow swelling compared to the traditional running shoe group, meaning there was more swelling in the bone marrow in the minimalist shoe group compared to the traditional running shoe group. But the researchers weren't all hating on minimalist shoe groups here because uh, they basically said in the conclusions, runners interested in making the transition to minimalist shoes should transition slowly and gradually to avoid potential stress injury. So basically what they're saying is 10 weeks may not be enough time um, to make their transition from a traditional to a minimalist run shoe. It may be more, need to be more slow and gradual to prevent that bone marrow swelling. Now, now you see the, you know, kind of the pros, the, you know, of, of minimalist running shoes, improving running economy, and then maybe some of the cons of causing, you know, injuries. But when it comes to injuries, I got to be fair too, because there's other, other studies out there that show running in minimalist shoes can actually prevent uh, injuries from happening more often. So at this point, you're probably throwing your hands up in the air and being like, what the hell is going on? Is, is minimalist shoes the way to go or is, is it not? And my answer to you is, I don't think anybody knows at this point. I need to make a really important uh, point here. All these scientific studies done on you know minimalist shoes, barefoot shoes, and compared to traditional running shoes, they don't prove anything. Science doesn't aim to prove anything. Science basically wants to demonstrate things. So a scientist does a study, he gets a certain results. That study should be replicated again and again and again and again till we get closer to an answer uh, on, on anything when we're studying science. So the case with, you know, barefoot running shoes, if there's one study that shows it improves running economy, that experiment should be replicated over and over and again till we get to a better answer. And again, none of this proves anything. It just demonstrates certain things. The point being, at this point in time, I think a lot more research needs to be done on minimalist running shoes and barefoot running shoes compared to traditional running shoes so we can make maybe a stronger argument for each, each or the other one as time goes on. But here, here's my personal opinion right here. Again, I haven't really ran in minimalist shoes, but on the same token too, I really don't have a problem with minimalist shoes. Like if you like them and they're working for you and you're noticing less injuries and you're running faster, so be it. Stick with the minimalist running shoes. On the other hand, if you tried them and tried them over again and it's just not your thing and you really like your traditional running shoe, you know, definitely stick with that. At the end of the day, you know, science only demonstrates so much, but then you also have to consider field experience to our personal experience. We're all so different, you know, biomechanically and physiologically that there's not going to be a right answer for everyone. 
Um, so let's just, let's, let's end with this. We're going to do a couple more slides and we're just going to look at the potential benefits of barefoot running and the potential negative, uh, <laughs> outcomes of barefoot running. And again, this is all based on the research and take this with a grain of salt. You know, I'm not my intention here to piss anybody off with any of this is just kind of keeping an open mind when it comes to this stuff. So potential bear, benefits of barefoot running, uh, may strengthen muscles, tendons, and ligaments of the foot and allow one to develop a more natural gait. This is, this is probably pretty true. You're not having as much support underneath your foot. It's making your foot and your lower legs maybe work a little bit harder. Um, runners will learn to land on the forefoot rather than the heel. Like we discussed before, this can have certain benefits when it comes to injury prevention, specifically shin splints. Uh, may improve balance and proprioception. Yeah, absolutely. I get it. There's less underneath your foot um, and that would require more balance and proprioception. Um, and then let's see, running barefoot helps one improve balance. We already said that. Okay, so that's the potential benefits of barefoot running in addition to like running economy and some of the things we mentioned in the studies. Uh, now the potential negatives of minimalist barefoot running. Um, you know, I think if you go this route, you have to be really careful about slowly transitioning it. I don't think you just want to go zero to 100 going from a traditional running shoe to a minimalist running shoe. It might be a little bit of a shock to the system. If I were to do it, I would start slow and gradually, maybe run in a minimalist shoe, you know, one or two times a week and slowly build uh, up from there. Uh, point number two, I mean, if you're having any no existing issues are pain. Do you really need to make the switch? Why do you want to make the switch to a minimalist shoe? I, that's a really a question you have to answer. Um, if you think it's going to, you know, provide performance benefits, hey, give it a try. But if nothing hurts, I'm under the mindset of, you know, nothing hurts, you're running good, maybe nothing needs to be fixed. Uh, minimalist running shoes offer less protection, you know, on rocks or if you were to step on glass or, or things like that. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, it may cause, again, stress to the foot like, you know, plantar fasciitis. But again, this may just be because if you go from zero to 100, hopping in from the minimalist shoe or from, hopping from the traditional shoe to the minimalist shoe, you know, you may have a higher rate of injury just because you're trying to do it so, so fast. And then the last point, potential negative, um, this is more specifically for running barefoot. You're going to get blisters. You're going to step on shit. You might get your toes cut up until your foot cows is up. So that is the long and drawn out video on minimalist running shoes versus traditional running shoes. And if they improve running economy, if they prevent injury um, and, and things like that. Again, my stance on this is simple. If you like the minimalist barefoot running shoe movement, stick with it. If you don't, don't do it. At the end of the day, it's a personal preference and whatever works best for you is probably what you should stick with. So I hope you enjoyed your popcorn and your uh, soft drink for that extended video. If you have a friend who runs in a minimalist shoe or uh, argues with you all the time about minimalist shoes, share this video with them. If you want other videos on endurance training, nutrition, and supplementation, subscribe to the Endure Elite YouTube channel or head on over to the Endure Elite blog at www.endureelite.com. Get social with us on Instagram in our Endure Elite Facebook training and nutrition club. And until next time, my endurance friends, stay fueled, stay focused, and stay fast.